multiple baselines across behaviors. Uh, well, that's an experimental design, folks. We use that multiple baseline, which is that hyper-elegant A-B design where you stack all those A-B designs, right? So the point is, is that you start your baseline, you start in, or you get your baseline, establish predictability, in other words, stability, and then you, you make your change, right? Um, then you go on to establish the next baseline, but it overlaps into the intervention phase of the first, of the first you know, little experiment that you're doing, and you do it again for the third time, right? So you have overlapping baselines. The second one is longer than the first. Um, the third one is longer than the second before you start your intervention phase. Again, you can look at the graphs and take a look. In this particular example, um, we will do, we're actually just going to wrap both of them up together. We have an, a, a multiple baseline across subjects, right? Which is where we're going to use different people for each baseline. So we go a multiple baseline for Bob, a multi, actually a multiple baseline for Kutsia, a multiple baseline for Tox, and a, a multiple baseline for, oh, I don't know, um, me, Ryan. You can put Ryan at the bottom, okay? I, I don't care. It's something else in the example. I just can't remember what it is right now. Um, so you could do an intervention for all three of those people, right? And it just start that intervention at different times. Behaviors and settings. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and as Brad has corrected me, I wasn't supposed to talk about multiple interventions or multiple baselines across people. I was supposed to talk about multiple baselines across settings, right? Which is the same thing. You just don't, you do one person across three settings, like home, work, school, or something like that. So if I've been picking my nose too much and everybody's complaining about me picking my nose, you might want to get that behavior under control at school, all right? Um, but you also might want to get that behavior under control at home, and you might want to get that behavior under control at work, right? So you just do the same intervention across three different settings just offset the start time for the intervention. Um, what was the other one, Brad, since I seem to be forgetting? <laughs> not people, not settings, must have been behaviors. So maybe Brad is tired of all of my shit and he wants to change all of the behaviors that are associated that he doesn't like. So he doesn't like my nose picking, he doesn't like my ear twirling, and he doesn't like it when I rub my head. So we're going to get rid of head rubbing, we're going to get rid of nose picking, and we're going to get rid of ear twirling in three different phases using the same intervention. Remember, we just offset the start of the intervention phase to see how effective that intervention is. Um, based on how the behavior changes when the intervention starts, right? So, <coughs> anyway, that was a joke. Um, not really, I was coughing, but beside the point. So, all you need to do is look at the graphs. They kind of make some sense. I'm not going to tell you whether or not the graphs go up or go down, because every time I do that, I screw it up and it pisses Brad off. So, he's effectively reduced the behavior on that particular issue. See you.